You cannot love anyone, let alone God, with all your heart without spending time in his presence. You have to give him time to talk back to you with the word of God open in front of you. What is the heart? Yeah, people have got used to do this, you know what I mean? You seen this? They do this for cats and dogs, <laughs> for sports teams. Hey, all kinds of stuff. There. I don't know people on Radio Land saying, what is he doing? <laughs> I'm doing the sign of the heart. It, it, the heart is more than that. The heart is, is, is more than what you have in, in Valentine cards, <laughs> you know? In the Scripture, the heart is the center of your personality. In the Scripture, when they use the term heart, it is the core of your being. And that is why we say to people, receive Jesus into your heart. And sometimes when our kids were little, we said, where is Jesus? is point to their heart. He's in my heart. But it's more than that, that, that muscle that pumps blood into your body. When we say you receive Jesus into your heart, we're saying let him dwell at the very center of your life. Let him dwell at the very center of your being. Let him dwell to be the focus of your life. And so... How do I love anyone, let alone God, with all my heart? I'm glad you asked. So don't miss this. Don't miss this. Because there's no going around this. There are no shortcuts. Anybody tells you there are shortcuts, what I'm going to tell you, they're not telling you the truth. You can't go around it. You cannot love anyone, let alone God, with all your heart without spending time in his presence. It takes time. Listen to me. You cannot love someone by having secondhand information about that person. It is not only difficult, it is impossible. Someone will say to me, Michael, Michael, you don't understand. I, I pray all day long. I, I, Jesus is in my mind all day long. I'm, I'm constantly in the car. I'm praying. And I'm in the office. I'm praying. I'm, I'm praying all the time. Wonderful. Don't stop. But listen to me. Sending cables to someone all day long is going to make you know this person, let alone love that person. <laughs> Insistently emailing someone or sending text to someone does not build intimacy with that person. Why? Because intimacy cannot develop when you are consistently doing all the talking. Hello. <laughs> I used to have a lady in my church in Sydney, Australia, and when, she, when the phone rings, I said, hello, she starts talking. She doesn't even say, is that you, Michael? <laughs> she just starts talking, and she talks, and she talks, and when she finished, she hangs up. Before I said, ah, uh, she hung up. <laughs> Intimacy cannot develop. When, when you're constantly, you have to give him time to talk back to you with the word of God open in front of you. You have to give him a, the chance to talk back to you. For intimacy with Jesus to take place, you must develop your listening skills. You must create a time with the Word of God open in front of you, you must create the time when you are just focusing on listening. You cannot listen when your focus is on what you're going to say next. You know, you've been with people like that? I mean, you, 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 they're not listening to a blessed thing you're saying. All they can think about is what they're going to say next. I, I, think, I think most of you know what I'm talking about. <laughs> There's no going around this, beloved. There's no going around it. Oh, we can do all kinds of tricks and, and games and with our heads, but there's no going around it. 
You must have time to be quiet and listen. Hear me right, please. I want to tell you this, and I already got his permission. <laughs> when Jonathan was about eight, nine, ten, that kind of age, um, <laughs> my study in the house we lived in was in the basement, and, and really gone. Not many people would come down unless they need something or want something because that's my, where my study is. And, and, and uh, he would come in and he would just sit in my study. I'm reading and I'm writing and I'm studying and I'm praying and stopping every now and again. But he, he, just sit, he, he, he quietly just sits there. Typical Father. Not in any suspicion, but just kind of natural thing. What do you need? Right? I mean, that's the first question. What do you need? Nothing. <laughs> Anything I can do for you? No. Nope. Jonathan has always been a man of few words. <laughs> but when he speaks, he speaks volumes. <laughs> and he just sits there, quiet, not saying a word. Finally, it dawned on my th in my thick head. <laughs> it really is. It finally it dawned on my thick head. This child is just contented to quietly sit in his father's presence. He doesn't need anything. He doesn't want anything. And that, my beloved friend, taught me a huge lesson in my intimacy with my heavenly father. It taught me to be contented to sit quietly in his presence. Not always, but sometimes God waits. And he waits. You've heard me say this many times. He takes his sweet time. <laughs> Until I'm still in his presence. And when he totally got my attention, then he speaks. Beloved, this cannot happen. That cannot happen. When the phone is ringing off the hook and the television bellowing and, 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 and when your thoughts are racing 120 miles an hour, you know what I'm talking about? One of the Moravian leaders, Count Zinzendorf, this is actually the group that actually led John Wesley to Christ. A godly man gave it all for Jesus, Count Zinzendorf. He said the following about intimacy with Jesus. Listen carefully, please. He said, an understanding that comes from concepts, and you can learn concepts all day long. Any understanding that comes from concepts changes with time, with education, or with circumstances, but an understanding that arrived to through experience does not change, does not change. Such understanding becomes better with time and with circumstances. Now, apply this to your intimacy with the Lord Jesus Christ. At the very, very, very part, first part of this series, I talked about boredom, getting bored in your Christian walk. Some people get bored, and, and they're constantly moving around from one place to another. They get bored. A lot of people get bored in their Christian walk, and, and, and they new ideas and exciting ideas, and they jump all over it, and all of a sudden, these ideas become old and stale, and they just move on. <laughs> what was once exciting becomes old and stale and boring. But not so in your intimacy with Jesus. Not so with your intimacy with your heavenly Father. The more you spend in intimacy with Jesus, the more you know him. And the more you get to know him, uh, the more you get to love him. And the more you love him, the more you want to love him. And the more you want to love him, the more you want to love him with all of your heart.